Which roof direction is best in order to get the greatest solar generation? The general consensus is that south facing roofs generally do better, but does that mean you shouldn't buy solar panels if you have an east or west facing roof for example? Well, no, not necessarily. East and west roofs still offer a great option and also provide some additional benefits over a south facing roof, which I'll discuss in this video. And for this video, I've collaborated with everyone's favorite solar YouTuber, Gary Does Solar. He has sent me his data for the previous 12 months and I'll be comparing that with my data and looking at some of the nuances in the two different systems. Stay tuned for more. Hi everyone, I'm Danny V Solar, and on this channel you can follow my journey, all things solar, electric vehicles, energy tariffs, and much more. If you find this video useful, please hit the like button and also subscribe to my channel, and that'll help it reach a wider audience and hopefully help more people in turn. So let's start by taking a look at the two systems that we're comparing today. My friend Gary from Gary Does Solar has kindly sent me his statistics for the past 12 months on his solar system. He has a south facing 7 kilowatt peak array and he sent me his statistics from the 23rd of March 2023 through to the 23rd of March 2024. So this is slightly bigger than my system but should give us a good comparison when looking at the two systems and the differences between them. Make sure you subscribe to Gary on his channel, I've linked it in the description. He posts some great videos frequently on all things relating to solar panels, energy tariffs and much more. So my solar install is an east-west array and I have 6 panels on my east facing roof and 10 panels on the west facing roof and that totals 6.32 kilowatts peak. Now as I always say this isn't an exact science and much of this is also determined by the location in the country as well as the array size. So Gary's located much further south than me. I'm in the northeast of England, so you would expect the generation to be slightly lower anyway, but there's many other factors that can also have an influence, such as panel efficiency and system losses, but hopefully this gives a good guide as to the differences in the systems anyway, and whether a south, east or west facing array would work for you. And if we look at the annual generation first, as you can see, Gary's system generated 7,003 kilowatt hours or 7 megawatt hours across the 12 month period that we measured from the 23rd of March 2023 to the 23rd of March 2024. My system generated just 4,719 kilowatt hours. But if we scale that up to ensure the system is the same size as Gary's, which I think equates to just over 10% difference, that takes my annual generation to 5,223 kilowatt hours. So still a good chunk less than what Gary generated across the year with his South Array. 25% less in fact, and if we add a little bit more onto my generation to count for the fact that I'm further north in the UK, this seems to tie in well with some of the data from Green Business Watch, which estimates that an east-west array will generate around 80% of that of a south array, so tying in nicely with those figures. So while some of this has to do with the fact that he's further south and generally gets lighter days, there's still a definite benefit to having a south array over an east-west array. But does that paint the whole picture? Next, let's take a look at the monthly generation across the whole year. So what I've done with this data is where we had January, February, March from 2024. I've just moved that to the start to give a whole year's generation. And as you can see, um, we have two quite neat but different patterns showing uh, on the chart. So my generation scaled up to Gary's solar system size is in the red and Gary's is in the blue. But what's quite interesting with this chart is actually the difference between the spring and summer generation versus the autumn and winter generation. As you can see, there's quite a big gap between the generation in the winter months. But once you get to summer, you actually see that the east-west array performs almost as good as by the time we take into the fact that I'm further north, potentially even better than the south-facing array during those summer months, May, June and July. And for one of the months, my system actually generated more in May. That generated 103% versus Gary's generation. And as you can see, by the time we get to August again, that starts to tail off and a bigger gap opens up. What also makes quite an interesting graph for viewing is the percentage generation that my system generated versus Gary's. And as you can see, we get quite a curve here. So starting off in the winter months, around about 30%, but then quickly scaling up to be on par with or potentially better than a south facing array for May, June and July and then again tailing off towards November. I think December looks like a bit of a discrepancy there, I'm not sure why that's slightly higher. It could be to do with the fact that we didn't have much sun in December overall so both systems performed poorly but generally quite a neat curve there that you can see. 
And certainly for those three months, the east-west array performs just as well as the south array. So as you can see, the big difference mostly is that the sun just does not get high enough in the sky for my east-west facing array during the winter months to make a meaningful difference to my generation and it really suffers for this. Even on the darkest winter days, a south facing array would still do quite well on a sunny day in winter. Whereas because the sun does not get high enough in the sky, generally my generation throughout winter is really poor, even on the best days. So the annual generation is one aspect to this, but there's also the daily generation that we can look at as well, which provides a slightly different outlook again, especially in the summer months. Now this isn't quite as easy to show with daily generation as the weather at a particular location has an even bigger effect on a daily basis rather than a monthly basis. So I've generated the following charts, which show the gist of what I'm trying to get at better than a daily chart can when me and Gary compare the two charts. What's important here is the picture across the day. With the east-west array, once the sun gets high enough in the sky, the generation generally starts slightly earlier in the day as the sun hits the east-facing panels before it would hit the south-facing panels. And whilst the south array will have a steeper curve across the day and peak in the middle of the day, the west array keeps generating beyond that of the south array into the evening and this has a couple of benefits. So one for me personally is that most of my home consumption is in the early mornings and the evenings. And this means that the solar is generating power that we can use when we need it the most. And this is a primary reason that I went for the six panels on my east facing roof and 10 panels on the west facing roof. And although the battery install somewhat negates this a little, it means that the system is designed around my own personal usage pattern. The second benefit of an east-west install is for those of you utilizing summer tariffs such as Octopus Flux, you can check out a video specifically about Octopus Flux on my channel. But what this tariff does is allow you to export your generated solar back to the grid between the hours of 4 to 7 p.m. for a really high export rate, which helps to reduce the payback time of your system. Here, the late in the day west generation helps you to make the most of the tariff and export more power that little bit later back to the grid than a south array would. So certainly worthwhile benefit. If you would like to join Octopus and sign up to one of their great smart tariffs such as Octopus Flux, or the one I'm currently using called Intelligent Octopus Go, which allows me to charge my EV for seven and a half pence per kilowatt hour overnight, it would be great if you could click on the link that's on the screen and in the description now. And if you sign up using this link, you get 50 pound added to your account when you join. So that's a great little bonus. And I also get 50 pound as well, which helps to support the channel. Thank you. Interestingly, there's also some research that suggests that east-west facing solar arrays can actually do better than south facing arrays. And this is due to the angles that the solar panels can be installed without actually shadowing any of the neighboring panels. South facing panels are usually situated at a 25 degree angle to avoid shading on the other panels nearby but east-west panels can actually be situated at around five to 10 degrees. And what this means is although they don't generate more, you can actually install more panels in the same area with the east-west facing option. And this can actually increase the overall generation versus the south array by situating them in this way. Installs such as this as well can also provide a longer day, which I discussed earlier, and also help to support the grid a bit better than what south arrays might be able to. At this stage, it's probably worth discussing north facing roofs as well. These are generally discounted as a bad option and it's not recommended that you install panels on these roofs but if this is your only option they can also provide some additional generation obviously not as much as an east-west facing array or a south facing array but every little helps it's estimated that a north facing array can generate up to 60 percent of that of a south array so still something to consider if you're debating getting solar and north facing roofs are the only ones available to you Anyway, hopefully that summary is useful. If you're considering an east-west array or a south array, please hit the like button if you found this video useful and also consider subscribing to follow me on this journey. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.